Hello Interwebs, welcome to Board Repair Basics. Um, I've got a uh, 820-2879 here. Um, now, this, um, this MacBook Pro is in for heavy liquid damage. Uh, the actual board in question is this dude here. Uh, so this thing was heavily corroded. We had, uh, we had visible liquid damage and corrosion all across this section of the board. The whole thing got plastered, basically. It was a real crap show and the whole laptop is just generally in really poor condition. Um, now, the symptoms I have on this board are that the, um, uh, the SMC is power cycling, it's turning on and off repeatedly. Um, I investigated the issue, but I struck out on this one. I couldn't figure it out. Um, however, what I did notice was my donor board, one of my donor boards I have kicking around, which is this guy here, the only thing that's actually wrong with this one is a bad backlight. So I'm figuring, rather than dicking around trying to fix this one, um, we'll use bits from this board to fix the backlight on this one. That's the plan anyway. Although the problem is, backlight is all up here. So no idea if the backlight works on this thing or not either. But, you know, we'll figure it out. So here is my setup. I've got, um, I've got the display from the laptop here. And I've got that plugged in to my donor logic board. I know this thing works already. So let's power it up and I'll show you what we get with no backlight. So we're going to plug it in. And are you going to be nice and turn on for me? No, of course you're not. We're going to have to uh, start this one up manually. So uh, to power it on, we're going to find the power on signal on the keyboard connector. Um, keyboard on off L. There we go. So when we short this signal to ground, it's going to tell it to turn on. So we need a ground point, which is right there on that capacitor. So let's find that on the board. Should be these guys here. There we go. So by shorting that power on signal to ground, that's told, signaled it to turn on. So we're just going to wait for this to post. And what we're going to see is that uh, firstly, you'll notice that the display has not illuminated in any way. You can always faintly see the backlight on a laptop. Now I just need to move clear this slightly just so we can see the middle of the screen. That should do it. And let's just wait for that to start up. And as you can see, where I'm shining the torch through the Apple logo on the back of the screen, we can see that the screen is actually on and we have a flashing question mark folder, which means that this logic board is, is working just fine. But there's no, dis there's no backlight, there's no illumination to the screen. So that's what we've got to solve. So first of all, I know this screen works. I know it's not a display fault because I've tested another screen. So we know it's not that. So firstly, let's find out what's going on. The first thing I want to know is how much voltage is there going to the backlight? Is, have we got zero or do we have anything at all? Now, before we get started with this, I'm going to quickly run you through the backlight circuit, the raw basics of it and what it does and how it works. So let's take a look at some schematics here. Right, excuse the horribly wonky camera today. I can't be bothered to sort that out. Anyway, so um, our story for the backlight starts here. Uh, this is the backlight enable circuit. Um, so what this circuit does is it is the enable circuit that allows power to get to the backlight, it, well, to the backlight driver circuit. Um, so uh, the purpose of this circuit is firstly to fuse the input. So first thing we've got here is F9800, which is a fused input to make sure that if there's a big explosion on the backlight circuit, it's not going to take the rest of the laptop with it because we're going to have high voltage later on in this backlight circuit. So we have PPBus SO LCD backlight. This guy here, he connects back to PPBus G3 hot. So this is a 12 volt input to the entire system. So we go into F9800, the fuse. This guy regularly blows when there's a fault. So we'll be checking into him later on. So in order to actually get to our output, which is LCD backlight power, uh, we have to get through this transistor here. Now, this transistor needs to switch on and allow power to flow out of it in order to get to the rest of the backlight circuit. So in order for this transistor to turn on, um, the, uh, the bottom input here, three, pin three, this, the voltage here must be lower than the voltage at pin four. Now, in order to bring that voltage down, we have a voltage divider, which is these two resistors and the uh, an output between them. So these two resistors are going to divide up some of the voltage coming into the circuit and provide a lower output to the bottom. However, in order for the divider to work, it needs a path to ground. 
So that then travels all the way down here to ground down here. But in order to get there, it's got to go through another two transistors. So in order for these two transistors to switch on and allow some of this power to leak to ground, we need these two input signals down here. So we've got LCD backlight enable and backlight PLT reset low. So remember, an L means low. So uh, this one means that when this signal is low, the backlight will be in reset mode, uh, which means off, basically. So we want this one to be high. And because this is, is, this is an enable signal, we want that one to be high as well. We enable on high. So we enable on high and we reset on low. So we want both of those to be high. And when they're both high, both of these transistors will be on and the voltage divider will have a path to ground. So that now means that power will flow across the top of the screen here to LCD backlight power. So that's stage one. Okay, so stage two is this guy. This is our main backlight boost circuit. Now, um, the backlight comprises of an array of LEDs that illuminate the sides of the screen. Now, LEDs use up quite a lot of power when you've got them all wired up together. We need quite a lot of volts to drive all those LEDs. Um, and obviously, we're gonna need more than 12 volts. We actually need something like, uh, what is it? Yeah, we're looking at, we need about 50 volts here, which is a lot of power for a small laptop. Um, now, obviously, it's not very high amperage, but it's very high voltage. We need a lot of push. So, what we need is we can't just put a transformer in this thing. We don't have space for transformers. So we need the opposite of a buck converter. We're gonna have a DC-DC boost circuit, which is literally gonna do the complete opposite of a buck converter. It's going to boost voltage rather than cut it down. So we have our input here. This has come from the enable circuit um, that we were just looking at. Um, so what this is gonna do is it's going to flow through this coil, through this Zener diode, and straight out at SW backlight. Let's zoom in on that so you can have a look. So we're coming in here, and as you can see, look, we have a straight line right across the top there. Straight line right across. Now, there's no obstruction there. So the first thing you'll notice is that under normal conditions, that means that we'll have 12 volts going straight across the top of our circuit into the backlight. Um, and that will be there even when the circuit is not boosting because it has a straight line across the top. There's nothing obstructing it. Uh, there's no transistors there that are able to turn it off. That's why we needed that enable circuit to provide some protection in case there's a problem. So why is there a straight line across there, you might ask? Well, that's the way a boost circuit works. Notice we have a coil here. Now, if you all reckon back to my lesson on buck converters, you'll remember that coils resist a change in power. They resist a change in flow of power. Um, and so this guy, initially we've got 12 volts going through, he's gonna allow 12 volts through. Um, but what's gonna happen is if we zoom out slightly to bring in the controller here, this controller is going to create a short to ground. Uh, through this wire here, the switch wire here, this dude is going to short this line to ground. And that is gonna cause a flood of electricity to start flowing. Because there is a direct short to ground, power will suddenly ramp up big time because there's a direct short to ground with nothing obstructing it. So the electricity will take the path of least resistance into the short circuit. So as the power suddenly ramps up, the coil is going to resist that change in power uh, because it resists any changes. So the coil is gonna suddenly start building up a big charge in its electromagnetic field. Now, as soon as that ramp up is complete, uh, the, the controller will turn off the short circuit and it will suddenly just go snap, S short circuit is gone. And then the coil will do what coils do when the power changes again, and it's going to take all of its stored energy and go and it's gonna dump it all straight back onto this line and it's going to flood out across the output here in the form of 50 volts. And so by that instance, we've got 12 volts coming in and it's gonna go rush, ramp up to a load of energy in here. And then as soon as the short circuit is gone, the power will need somewhere to go so it'll go bang, out straight out the output at 50 volts. And so by, doing, by turning things on sequentially, like the buck converter, by turning it on and off, in a steady rhythm, 
at a free, certain frequency, you can control the voltage. And this guy has a wire here, this feedback wire. Um, the schematic is broken, it's in a square, but this feedback wire actually connects up to here. So this, the controller can monitor the voltage and then it can turn the, it can change its frequency that it's switching on and off at until it finds a perfect output voltage of 50 volts. And then finally, as per usual, because coil and capacitors, we then level that out and we get a nice smooth output. So this is how you can get high voltage out of a lower voltage input without a transformer, without big transformer windings. So that is what the DC-DC boost circuit does. Then, as well as that, we've also got a load of sense lines and stuff like that that are coming back into this circuit and some other stuff. We've got an uh, LCD backlight power coming in here. So this gives power to this circuit. And there's probably some enable pins here as well. We've also got backlight V-Sync. So the backlight uh, update is synchronized with the LCD and stuff like that. But the important thing is this guy here, the DC-DC boost line. Um, so uh, that will then go to PPV out, SWLCD backlight, and that's gonna go straight into our actual LCD panel. So in order to diagnose our faulty backlight, I'm gonna go back to the start again, and we're gonna follow this along and see how far our power is getting. So let's head back down to page 71, back to our enable circuit, and let's start at F9800, and let's see what power we've got over here. So in summary, in this episode, we have learned how a DC to DC boost circuit works and how it powers the backlight on a MacBook Pro and also what other conditions are required in order to switch on that backlight. So thank you very much for watching and stick any questions you have in the comments below and I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye for now.